everybody, this is Rich from Raw Micro bringing you a tutorial on um, uh, using flow code to generate some pulse width modulation signals out of your microchip pick. We're going to be using flow code like I said, we're going to be using the Picket 2 programmer. We're going to be using a uh, PIC 16F886 and a uh, uh, chip X module which is essentially a board that uh, you plug in your Picket 2 into and you uh, plug your microchip pick into the, the socket, the 28 uh, pin socket that's on the, the chip X module. Uh, the chip X module allows you to have access to some of the programming uh, pins of the micro. I'm going to show you what those are right now. Uh, the chip X um, makes connections to uh, master clear, the, the data pin, the clock pin, uh, it also allows you to uh, access, let's say, power and ground, which is a VDD and VSS, 5 volts and 0 volts. And you'll notice that there are five connections here. The uh, Picket Programmer and the ChipX module has six. Uh, don't worry about the sixth one. It has no connection. We can only, only guess what that was for. Um, maybe it's... Uh, put there by microchip for some future feature or something, but it's not connected, so no need to worry about it. So, while we're here looking at the pinouts, let's take a look at where the, the PWM is going to come out of on this chip when we're done programming it. And it's going to come out of pins 12 and 13. You can see the CCP1 right here and CCP2. Those are the enhanced capture compare PWM uh, pins for the hardware peripheral on this device and that's where they're going to come out of. So let's jump over to flow code and get this thing started. Okay, so we're going to do file new. It's going to find our 16F886. Hit OK. Get rid of these things. Not necessary. Let's uh, clean up our workspace a little bit. Okay, now we're going to configure our 886 by going to Chip Configure. And you'll notice that this is always wrong. I don't know why. Just jump right into the uh, Expert Config screen. First thing we're going to want to do is turn off our Watchdog Timer. We don't really need that in this example. And that's all we need to change on this config screen. Hit OK. And first thing we're going to want to do is drag the, uh, the hardware into our panel. This is our panel screen in the middle. So go to Mechatronics, PWM, and you'll see that this is a representation of the hardware peripheral on the PIC. You see we've got CCP1 on the top, CCP2 on the bottom. Now what we're going to have to do is come over to our main program. I'm going to go ahead and drag, uh, like you have to do with full code all the time, you're going to have to have a component macro that runs your component in the panel. I'm dragging four of them over there because I kind of know in advance that I'm going to have to first enable the, the PWM, then I'm going to have to set the duty cycle. I'm going to have to do each one of those twice. Now I also know that I'm going to need a variable for the duty cycle. So let's go ahead and put that in right on top here. And I'm going to do that first. We're going to declare a variable here. Come into this property screen for calculation and select variables. Add new variable. And type it in here. We're going to go duty1. And it's going to be a a byte in the range of 0 to 255. And while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and um, add another variable for the cycle. Whoops. Oh, can't seem to type today. Duty 2. Okay, and again, that, that's a byte again. Okay. Now, we're going to use this first one. 
and let's set it equal to something. Let's have our first PWM output generate a signal at 50% duty cycle. Now I can't put 50 in here because this is a 250, 0 to 255. So in order to be 50%, it needs to be what? About 128. Same thing with uh, the duty cycle for the second PWM. If I want a 10% duty cycle, I can't put 10 in here. I have to go 10% of 256, which is about 25. Okay? And we're going to hit OK. But the rest of it is like falling off a log. All right, here we go. Go into our first um, component macro. Now you see that this PWM becomes available. The reason that becomes available there is because we dragged in this hardware into the panel. So we select it and we're going to enable it. And we're going to enable number one. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to enable number two. Now we're going to set the uh, set the duty cycle on each one of our PWMs. So select this one. Set duty cycle on number one, and we're going to type that variable in. Now, you understand you could just put 128 there, but you might want to change it later to some, some other value. So it's better to use a variable. I'm going to select OK. Come to our second PWM. Set that duty cycle to whatever that was. Duty 2. And select OK. OK. Now one of the things, this will run fine, uh, probably the way it is now, but watch when I hit, hit our simulation. Simulation ends very quickly. Um, it shows you the results of uh, uh, the PWM, which is exactly what we were looking for, right? The 50% and down here the 10%, so we're successful there. Uh, the simulation ended very quickly because the program goes from beginning to end and it ends. Uh, this hardware will continue to generate this PWM even though the software has ended, um, the program has ended because we've configured that port and as long as it's powered it will continue to output that. Um, but generally in embedded programs usually there's a loop because there's other stuff that we want to do. So when I simulate this you can see that uh, simulation doesn't end the uh, Hardware continues to produce here, the, the PWM waveforms, and, and off we go. I'm going to stop that. So we're going to want to program this into our pick, so it's going to want me to save it. So I'm going to save this as that. And we're going to go to chip, compile the chip. And you're going to see in the video screen down below, you're going to see the busy signal on the Picket 2 light up, and then that means that it's programming. And I've got uh, probes on the uh, CCP pin so we can observe what kind of waveform we get on the other end. So here we go. It's compiling now, so it's going to take a little bit. Once it's compiled, it'll start sending it over to the chip. Alright, so on my scope you'll see that I have two waveforms. The yellow one is the 50% duty cycle waveform and the red one is the 10%. Looks pretty darn close to the one that we ran in the simulation. Looks like we've done what we've set out to do. Now, I just wanted to mention something about hardware PWMs. Very cool uh, because once you set these up in your code you are free to go off and do whatever else you need to do in your code. You don't have to come back and service them all the time. You don't have to, for example, come back every 52 microseconds and uh, set a pin high or set a pin low. You can set them and forget them. You can go off and do whatever calculations you need to do or whatever I.O. functions that you need to be concerned about. Um, 
one thing you need to be aware of if you're if you ever want to break out of flow code and maybe put some assembly routines which you can do in flow code and put some assembly routines in there you have to be aware that that the hardware PWM uses timer 2 and if you go into assembly and start jacking around with timer 2 it could affect your the output of your PWM so but hey if you don't know what timer 2 is you're probably not going to program an assembly and you're probably not going to have to worry about it so generally speaking I avoid it because I just get myself in trouble alright so anyway that's uh, this uh, rendition of uh, flow code for uh, programming picks and thanks for watching